Let's take a look at Mancandy's facial control bones. There are two groups of these bones, one on layer 9 and one on layer 10 of the armature. We'll go through each of these in turn because they both have a completely different way of doing the facial deformation. The ones on layer 9 were created in Mancandy 1.0 and they use the uh, shape key driving system in Blender. Basically there are shapes uh, applied to, to Mancandy's mesh and we can see those shapes if we click on the shape panel. We pin here and we can look at a variety of shapes that are applied each to Mancandy's mesh and so on and so forth. Uh, these shapes can be animated via an IPO animation curve that is driven by the location rotation or scale of a bone in the armature. And so you have the case where there are bones in the armature that are driving the influence of multiple shapes in man candy. And they're doing it not by direct deforming, but just by driving the curve that applies the shape. To see how this is done, the best way to do it is to basically create some kind of new funky shape for man candy and then drive it with a bone. So let's click on Man Candy's mesh here and let's examine what we could do with him to make a new shape. The easiest thing to do is probably to add some cheek, cheek puff shape. We notice that we don't have any way to puff out the cheeks in these set of controls and let's say we wanted to add that. The way to do that is to go into the shapes panel here and select the basis shape and then hit the pin key. Now the mesh is in its default mode, with no shapes applied. Once we're in this mode, it's safe to add a new shape to Man Candy's mesh by clicking the Add Shape Key button. And now we have a new key called Key64. Let's call it Cheek Buff. Now let's go into Edit Mode. Hit Alt-H in case there are some vertices hidden in the mesh and everything is visible again. And now go down to your Mesh Tools 1 panel that appears in Edit Mode and make sure that you have X-axis mirror depressed. This allows motion of points on one side of the face to affect points on the other side. This is not the same as having linked copies or a mirror modifier. It's using the position of the points in space to determine which point is the mirror of the other. And you can indeed move the point on the right side or the left side of the mesh the same way and it infects its inverse. Now that we're working in this mode, let's quickly and roughly create our cheek puff shape by starting to move points out. So let's move this point out like here, this and so forth. And you can work in different views if you want. And you can also turn on the subsurf modifier on the armature. Which allows you to better see what you're doing. Though it does slow things down a bit. I'm going to turn off the modifier, the uh, manipulators, because they make it harder to see the mesh while I'm editing it. I'm going to continue creating my cheek puff shape. And it's always fun to exaggerate your shapes a little bit. So I'll just pull this out a little bit further. And I'll hit tab. This is our new cheek puff shape for Man Candy. And you'll see that the basis of the mesh is unaffected. Now that we have a cheek puff shape, before we actually start adding a bone to drive it, it might be a good idea to split it into a left and right side. 
so that Man Candy can puff his cheeks, both on the left and the right side of his face. Splitting this is actually a pretty simple proposition. And you can see how it's done for the other shapes if you go into weight paint mode on the mesh and you shift click on the left side of his face and you get a side.l group and on the right side there's a side.r group. And so now you can intuit how we're going to split the shape. Let's go back out of weight paint mode by hitting control tab. We can always use this menu here by the way to access all the different modes available on this object. And let's first of all pin the cheek puff shape and then add another shape key which copies the old one. Let's call this copy cheek puff dot mm, let's call this one dot, dot L and let's select it as, as its first vertex group side dot L. You'll see how it's only influencing that side of the face. Now let's select our original cheek puff, remain it cheek puff dot R, and have it influenced by the vertex group side dot R. And so vertex groups can be used to mask the effect of shapes thus allowing us to split one shape into two. The next step is creating a controller for this shape, which will allow us to blend between the left side and the right side of the face of the shape. One way to do it is to add two controllers, one to the left side of the face and one to the right side, and each of these controllers affects each cheek puff side. That's really a good way to do it. However, I'm going to demonstrate a slightly trickier way that uses one controller to influence two shapes. If I unpin the shapes, we can see that in action here. Let's say I select this bone over here and move it straight up. It causes man candy to snarl. If I move it to the right side, he snarls on the right side. If I move it to the left side, he snarls on the left. That's the kind of control that we want to create for the cheek puffs. So we can create a symmetrical cheek puffing with one motion and then make it slightly asymmetrical by moving this controller from side to side. To make things a little bit faster, I'll leave Subsurf on, but I'll turn down the levels by one notch so we can still see Man Candy's shapes but the mesh will deform a little bit faster. Now let's go into edit mode and have a look at how this bone really looks. Conversely, we can uncheck draw shapes and see that in pose mode. You'll see that this bone is rotated on a 45 degree angle. That's very important for the type of driving that we're doing. And if I click on the manipulators, we can see that the y-axis is pointing along the bone, the x-axis is pointing here and here. So maybe we can guess how those shapes are driven. Let's have a look at the IPO curve editor. Here's the IPO curve editor set to material. If we click here, we can change that to look at the shape curves. Now we can see a whole bunch of curves here for the different channels that are created by all these shapes that Man Candy has on him. Let's click on the uh, upper lip up shapes. This one and this one. Those were the ones that we saw being controlled by this bone. And let's see how they're driven. Hit the N key here in the IPO curve window to bring up the transform properties. And let's have a look at how this curve is driven. It's driven by the armature, by the bone named bot ulip, and it's 
driven by its y location. And you'll notice it's all positive. As y increases, the influence of the shape increases. So here's our positive y direction for this bone. So pulling it either to this side or up vertically increases the influence of y. Now let's look at the left side shape. It's driven by an x location of the bone, also in the positive direction, but in this case, moving the bone on this axis affects only the x, local x motion of the bone, whereas moving it up affects both y and x, thus turning both shapes on. And so now we see that having the bone at a 45 degree angle gives us a very intuitive way of controlling two shapes on each side of, of, of the face at the same time. So let's do that with a new bone, this time controlling the cheek puffs left and right to see how that process is done. We'll go into edit mode on the armature and let's say we snap the cursor to this bone and then click a little bit above it and snap the cursor to the grid. Now we'll add a new bone. When you add a new bone in Blender, the tip is selected by default, so you can grab it and move it around. So grab that and move it down with the control key pressed. And zoom in. What we want for it to be at a 45 degree angle is that the number of divisions up is equal to the number of divisions it moves sideways, inscribing a small square. So let's go into local mode so we don't see the mesh behind us by hitting the slash key on a numpad, then hit the dot key on the numpad to zoom into the actual bone you have selected. Here it is. Let's move that bone up a little bit so we can distinguish it from the rest while keeping it snapped to the grid and then let's select the tip of the bone and let's move it and snap it to the grid. So that bone is now at a 45 degree angle. If we snap the cursor to the root of the bone we can then scale it down if we hit the dot key on the keyboard not the numpad to scale the bone down. So now we have a 45 degree scaled bone named Bone. That's a bad name. We'll call it Bot Cheek Buff. And hit Tab. Now hit the slash key on your numpad to go back into the general view so you can see the new bone you selected. Hit the comma key on the keyboard and you're back to the normal pivot mode for Blender. So now we have our new bone at a 45 degree angle in line with the other bones more or less that's there for controlling the cheek buff. It has, but you notice that there is still a slight problem in that the X and Y, X and Y axes are not in plane. So if you hit tab and hit control N on the bone, it'll recalculate the bone's roll angles, which you can't quite see unless you turn on draw axes for the bone. Or if you hit tab again, and you'll see that now that they're lining up perfectly. So now is the time to make this bone a controller for our cheek puffs. And let's copy its name, bot cheek puff, by hitting control C while we're hovering the mouse over the name of the bone, because we'll paste it later on when we're creating our drivers. Now click on the mesh and scroll down by middle mouse clicking and moving the mouse on your list of shapes. And you'll notice that you have cheekbuff.r and cheekbuff.l at the bottom here, and they have no curves yet. Selecting them activates the shape in the 3D viewport temporarily. So what we'll do is click on the Add Driver button here. In Object, we'll type Candy Scale, and we can tab Complete to finish typing the word.
In the Object field, we'll select Pose, and we'll hover the mouse over the Bone field and type Control v to paste the name of our cheek puff bone. We see that Location X is selected for the location for the driver for this bone. Let's see if that's really a good choice. By selecting the cheek buff bone and note that it's really location Y that should be driving cheek buff there are. So we'll change that to location Y by clicking here and selecting from the menu. As of yet there is no curve for the driver so we can hit I and create a default one-to-one -one napping and then change the extend mode of the curve to constant and change its type to linear. One thing that remains to be adjusted is the um, is how much the bone has to move to drive the change in the shape. If we click on cheek puff, cheek puff again, notice we have to move it quite a bit to see any influence on the shape. Moving it one seems to be a bit excessive. It seems much nicer if you only have to move it so far or 0 0.06 in the Y direction. Click on the mesh, click on the curve, and then click on X max and change it to 0.06. And you're done. Now you can cl click on this and you have a nice quick acting bone. If it seems like it's acting too quick, you can change this number to something bigger, like 0.1. There's really no rule about this, you just have to get it to feel right in order to be satisfied that it's working. Once you are, you can simply click on this curve and make sure these points are white and hence selected and hit the uh, copy selected curves to buffer down here in the header of the IPO curve window. Click on cheapbuff.l and paste it and then change the location field to location X for this bone. So now you have it working on both sides. Let's zoom out a little bit. And that's our cheek puff. If you turn draw shapes back on, we can give cheek puff a nice shape, perhaps similar to this one, simply by copying the shape name and pasting it in this field. Or we can model a total new object for the cheap puff shape if we think that this is not intuitive enough and use that as the shape. For instance, I'll add a monkey, scale it down, and I'll copy the name Suzanne as the name of our cheek puff, as the, as the shape of our cheek puff object. You'll notice that's far too small. So we'll scale Suzanne up until our cheek puff shape is visible. And just to keep it things intuitive, we'll rotate her, but with x-axis unchecked, 45 degrees, and that'll give us a nice shape for the cheek buff. Then we can hide the shape since we don't need to see Suzanne in the 3D viewport while we're working. And now we have a new a new little bot that controls Man Candy's cheek puffiness if we need to do that in an animation. We can lock down attributes that we're not interested in seeing in the transform properties and now this bone can only be moved on its x and y axes. And so that's how you add a traditional shape to Man Candy's facial controls.